After my son Ian was diagnosed with a brain tumor at the age of two, my wife and I looked around and we found out there was very little research going on. So with that, we got together with the support of friends, family, and even the PGA to start Ian's Friends Foundation to support pediatric brain tumor research. The thing at IFF that we've done is we've committed to focus on the best research. Things like at NYU, focusing on the sprouty pathways and what that can potentially do for the tumors and for the research being done with these tumors. Doing stuff like spectroscopy, whether it's at University of Pittsburgh or Children's LA. Other stuff being done at Georgia Tech and Emory and Children's. We're focusing on a multitude of different things. Ian's Friends Foundation is different. We're not just going after one type of tumor. We're going after every type of tumor. Foundations like the Ian's Friends Foundation really help with stimulating the development of novel ideas. The good thing about, I think, our field, I'm very impressed, is that uh, as soon as we have some insight, we are very quick to share it. We had a fantastic year last year. We invented a new drug and a nanocarrier in collaboration with Children's Hospital and with Emory that treats invasive tumors and stops them from moving. And when you stop invasive tumors from moving, we showed in this paper that you can actually treat these tumors with normal drugs that are already approved by the FDA. It's very important for us to keep that well of ideas and, and new approaches coming. And they come from research, from labs like mine, from other labs all over the country. The first thing that we ever invested in uh, at Cornell Medical Center was actually done in a child March 1st of this year. I'm happy to report that we treated our first child on a very innovative and novel phase one study for diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. From funding to implementation to getting it through internal review boards and actually into a child, uh, that procedure, it's incredible. But more importantly, it gave that child and that family the opportunity of another tomorrow. And I don't think there's a better gift that you can give a child. I took her to the ER on Saturday because she wasn't eating and wasn't responding to me. And on Sunday, she practically almost died. Uh, it was very quick. In the back of my mind, I thought there was, you know, I, I'd been fixated on a benign condition that may have been causing her symptoms up to that point. But I, in the back of my mind, I kind of thought there was something wrong. She was in the CT scanner and I was watching the tech through the window. I saw the tech lean over and whisper in the nurse's ear and I knew we were in trouble. And uh, when the doctor called us into the room, I just felt like I didn't want to walk into that room because I kind of knew what was coming. Gary basically told me, <laughs> he basically told me to hold her because she may die. In my mind, I always thought of brain tumors, um, prim uh, primary brain tumors as a, as a uh, death sentence. As the days kind of unfolded, I, I kind of had a little bit of hope um, that this may actually be something we could uh, deal with. Bria is today intact but all of the vital aspects of her, of her living was in jeopardy. We had to make a decision as parents when there's not a lot out there. She was, had regained movement on the left side, but she wasn't moving the right side. I remember they brought a little dog to the ICU and she like leaned forward and put up her hand to touch the dog. We were just so proud that she could reach or lean forward and now she, we can't keep her still. Part of why we're doing this research is so that we are able to give patients and families like Bria's hope. Our goal always is to find a cure for these children and these families. Because when we take care of the children, we really are taking care of the entire family. I can't understate the, what a family goes through 
when something like this hits you and the whole trajectory of your life is changed and you feel like you're the only person in the world who is on that path. And the first uh, point where that was extremely helpful to us was when we were put in touch with the Yagodas. When you get a phone call from a concerned parent, you hear them almost trembling on the other side of the phone. And you try and be there for them. There's only a few people in the world who know exactly what you're going through, and they only know what you're going through because they're going through it too. They can really relate to the feeling that we feel, the, the debates that we have. There's a voice that tells you there is life after this, you know, for her and for us. So she's got a long way to go, but she's, she's come a long way. Oi. <laughs> there are so many children out there who are just looking for the opportunity of a better tomorrow. And so when you step back and you say, where are we going? What are we looking to achieve? We're looking to achieve success, not for ourselves, but for all these children. These are rare tumors, but in children who have a lot of life ahead of them. The issue is that we don't have a cure yet. In the last couple of years, we've seen a significant decrease in the amount of federal funding that's available to investigators like myself, uh, making it per very difficult to actually get grants to help us um, move forward with these ideas, which is why the foundation money is so critical. If I had Bill Gates' money, I could solve these problems for my child. But I am dependent on the goodwill and the intellectual efforts of others. These people are vital to us, even though they don't even know us. If we just recently send the robot to Mars, I think that the sky is the limit. I think we can find cure. It's possible, we just need to put our minds into it. And the way to do it is to donate and have the money for the research to get it done. There's a phrase, la door of a door, from generation to generation. In this situation, it's community to community. The community of people who are not affected with this disease have gotten together to help my family and our board further our research. Everyone's within the same community, and we all have one goal, to stop pediatric brain tumors. I may be the only person uh, in the country who wants to be put out of a job. I don't want to take out brain tumors on children anymore. Newly diagnosed family, I would say it's going to be harder than you even imagine. Much harder. But I think you will come to a place of hope. And we do see our daughter having a very meaningful, happy existence. We have more hope than we did. <laughs>